What's up YouTube? Robert Fuhr. I'm at the National Museum for Western Art in Tokyo, Japan. And I'm hanging out with my boy Rodan. Uh, it is January 21st, uh, 2017. It's a Saturday and I've spent the entire day museum hopping and I am just stoked. Today when I saw uh, Rodin's Hell's Gate, it, it, it reminded me of a funny story. When, uh, when I was in eighth grade, my, my teacher's name was uh, Mr. Budge. I excelled so much at it that the teacher actually gave me uh, the keys to the classroom. When he'd go home, I would stay there for an extra two, three hours. And over the summer, I devised a plan to make an exact replica of the thinker. So, I, I, you know, school was out, my friends were outside playing basketball, and I was inside just sculpting on this thing like every day. It's finished, and it's definitely by far the greatest thing I've ever created or painted or anything. And uh, when I go, I take it to school and I just, I just flattened everyone. My middle school teacher was floored too. He just couldn't believe it. This is the greatest thing that he's ever seen any student make. Anyways, uh, he takes it to get it fired. And one day he's like, Rob, like, I could tell he was really bothered and he didn't know how to tell me. I got really bad news. I was like, what? And he's like, the thinker is gone, man. I was like, no, I remember when I went home, I, was, I cried. Well, today looking at the, the thinker again, it just brought back that whole memory. And, and you know, Rodin is definitely my favorite sculptor because he, um, he really, he, he reminds me of Van Gogh, how he could like get into the person and, and use his entire passion for art to to really dive into that the shape of the body and the angle and the pose and you you really feel like there's a human being in there you know and it's it's amazing he he was there was many of his early pieces people said he just you know copied the body exactly like had a model and just measured it exactly and made an exact replica or even had life cast well to prove them wrong he started to make miniatures like even the thinker the thinkers not that big the original um, it looks like the security guy is coming to kick me out here in a minute <laughs> well anyways uh, he to prove people wrong, he started working much smaller than life size, which is what he originally was working in. Um, but uh, it's it's just amazing. He's so much talent uh, at Purchase College. I took some sculpture classes because I just heard raving reviews about one of the sculpture teachers. His name's Phil Listengard. He teaches at Purchase. The first day of class, he tells us that he has direct lineage to Rodin. His teacher's teacher's teacher was Rodin and I was just no way this is so awesome. It, it brought me back to this 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 middle school story that I was so I was infatuated with the thinker and Rodin and here years later my professor is freaking he he learned from Rodin and now I'm learning from Rodin because he's teaching me Rodin's method and he literally went through and showed us how Rodin sculpted a nose or sculpted an eye or sculpted an ear and everything and I just loved it and I spent four four months or five months maybe four and a half months sculpting my own head as detailed as I could and it was it was such a joy bronze casting is amazing and the the cool thing about it is we went from beginning to the end we did every single part by far my favorite part of the lost wax bronze casting process was when we heated the liquid bronze 
to 12,000 degrees Celsius and poured it into the empty mold. I think Phil Lissengard said it best. It's like witnessing the birth of a planet, seeing that molten lava just drip in there, witnessing the creation of all things. It's incredible. It's just one of those things any art lover needs to put on their bucket list. Although me and the thinker go way back, it's still not my favorite sculpture by Rodin. By far my favorite sculpture Rodin is of the French novelist Balzac. It was commissioned by the, a group of writers in Paris. Uh, the, the first artist they commissioned, they commissioned to do it passed away and one of the people knew Rodin so they su suggested Rodin should do it. He took over, they said they wanted it in like two years. He said, I can get it done. Anyways, Rodin goes crazy on it. He, wor he, he gets totally obsessed with Balzac. He reads like all of his literature. Or he, he meets with everyone that knew him while he was still alive because he'd already been dead for a couple years or 15 years or something. Anyways, he, he slaves over the scene forever. And the, the commission's like, hello, like how are you taking 10 years on this project? We want it now. They, they threatened to, to end the commission. Anyways, Rodin's like, okay, I'll get it done. He gets it done. He delivers it. When it was first on display, they reviled it. They rejected it. They hated it. But uh, Cezanne, Toulouse, Lautrec, and Monet, they, they, they said it was awesome. A really amazing piece of work. Um, so the writers group said it was an epic fail. And people, the public, hated it even more. They said things like, oh, it was, oh it's a block of salt caught in the shower, melting. Uh, some people said it looked like a seal or a bag of plaster, a snowman in a bathrobe. Uh, maybe they, other people said it looked like he was in a straight jacket. But Rodin stood by this piece. He said it was the result of a lifetime the pivot of my aesthetic. I really, I really totally agree with him. This piece is breathtaking. It really aimed to, to reveal the writer's persona. It didn't, it, he didn't worry about the physical likeness. It really, when you look at it, it's like he's recoiling from the world. He's leaning back. His head is thrown way back. It's like he's, as if he's, gasping for air and people might wonder he's an author why why didn't Rodin do a sculpture of him holding a pen in his hand instead of striding around in this bathrobe well that's just how Rodin does things look at the thinker the thinker is that guy the thinker no it looks like a football player in the locker room waiting in between games he, he doesn't look like Socrates. He doesn't look like Buddha. He looks like an athlete. So, you ask a man who makes these wild and unconventional sculptures to make a, a sculpture of a genius, what do you think you're gonna get?